Good afternoon YouTube and the internet. It's time again for my weekly tinker uh, to try and hunt down this mess. Now all I am going to do is a very quick and simple test of the coils. Uh, first I'm going to unscrew all these bolts and then simply start the car and once it's I've got it running and idling where I want it uh, I'll simply start unplugging them one at a time, pulling the coil off, and if there's a change in the idle, it means that coil is firing. If I pull one out and there's no change, it means that one is not firing. I don't think it's the coils, but it's a cheap, easy, free, simple test. So, that's uh, it's what I'm going to do. Um, there's still a few more bits and pieces I have to do. But, yeah, it's getting closer to me handing it over to someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, rather than me continuing to bugger around with it. Uh, assuming these coils are fine. The next thing would be to flow test and clean the injectors. Uh, which you should do before tuning anyway. Because you want to make sure they're all working properly. Uh, aside from that, nothing new. Um, I haven't, like, I've still got to do some of the stuff I've said. There's still things I have to do in here, which are going to be a pain in the ass. I still have to um, do up one of the bolts on the tail shaft, and I still have to put the get shifter in properly. Um, but none of those are urgent or things that I really care about until the engine's running right. Which it may not be by the time I hand it over. But uh, uh, if I'm handing it over to someone, it means I've got a job and I can afford to pay for it. So if I aren't doing these two bolts, it saves you having to um, do anything else really to pull the coils out one by one. <coughs> I sort of wrote this test off as too hard and I thought, oh hang on, no, it's pretty easy to um, undo those in situ. And then it's easy enough to just uh, pull the coils out one by one and see if it makes a difference. Oh, I also still have to fix that exhaust leak. Another thing on the to-do list. I wonder if that could have anything to do... I don't think so, but the O2 sensor is after that. But I doubt that would cause that problem. <coughs> Wouldn't be that far out. metering the volume of gases, it's just metering the uh, content of the exhaust gas. I think. Okay, so all the core packs are free. Let's get the loom out of those. So we can pull any individual coil out we like one at a time. Hopefully it continues to run when I pull them, <laughs> otherwise I've got to keep restarting it. Let's check the shirt in here. It'll hopefully catch some of this coolant before it runs down onto the fan and makes my belt squeal.
Well, that was pretty inconclusive. It um, seemed to make no difference whatsoever when I pulled the coils out. Turns out I got a diesel. Um, I'll let it warm up a little bit and repeat the test and hopefully get a result. But there was no discernible change on pretty much all those coils when I pulled them off. I don't get it. So as you can note out here in the background, the belt squirrel is unbearable so I won't be able to um, like film me doing that test again. Uh, I've got earplugs in because it's pretty bad. Uh, but I'll let you know how it goes. It's the same principle as what I just did and got no result. Well, interesting result. Pulling number one off, no change. No change whatsoever. Number two, no change. Number three, uh, there's definitely a spark leak because it was electrocuting me. Um, so, uh, you know, it didn't hurt or anything, but I could feel the pulses running through my finger uh, when I was leaning on the front of the car. So there's a spark leak there, and then when I pulled number four, it, it just stalled out. So, maybe it is coarse. Maybe they were working perfectly before I pulled it down, and now they're no good. Um, so my next step is probably turn the ignition off, so that low oil pressure warning doesn't keep this going on. Um, next step after doing that is probably to... Uh, uh, um, Borrow a coil on plug tester or get a set of coils and swap them out and see if that makes a difference. So, while I didn't think that was the issue, well, I do now. I've been proven wrong. Uh, there's definitely a spark leak from number three. It's, it's firing into my finger when I unplug it, which it shouldn't do. Um, it just shouldn't do it. Uh, that's when holding the um, ow, oh, just with my finger on the this bit here, but it shouldn't be live. I don't believe it should be live. So yes, interesting result, an unexpected result too. So yeah, that means this video is going to be pretty short unless I can go and get that uh, coil on plug tester that I was offered to borrow uh, a couple weeks ago. Unless I can get that today, this will be it. Or if I can get a set of coils today, this will be it. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm probably not going to be able to get a set of coils today. But I might be able to get that tester. It may just be bad coils. I mean, they just sat there. They didn't do anything. But maybe, yeah, maybe they've just gotten old. Who knows? Um, yeah, not what I expected. So we will see when I can test that a bit further. Until now, inconclusive, but something's not right with the coils. Uh, it would appear to be running on three cylinders. Uh, the other thing, remember I put a timing light on this, so I know that the coil is transmitting spark to the plug. Because that's where the, the tester goes on. It's between the coil and the spark plug. Maybe the brand new plugs are faulty. I, don't know, I swapped them out. I tried two different sorts. What are the odds of getting two different lots of faulty plugs in a row? Not impossible. Um, yeah, so I know it's getting spark to number one. Yet there's no change in the idle. I still think it's worth pursuing. I'll test the coil packs one way or another. Um, and move on from there. And if I can't do that today, this is it. Well, I'm talking to people who know what they're doing. Um, 
and so thanks Trent I deem you as someone who knows what you're doing and I'm saying giving you a shout out this time because you yelled at me for not giving you a shout out for loaning me the uh, timing gun uh, that points to injectors being blocked because definitely getting the, the spark to at least number one we know that because we put the timing gun on that but not changing at idle means it's probably not getting the fuel to burn so the sparks there but there's no fuel um, so I might just have to bite the bullet and get those injectors uh, clean and flow tested uh, it's pretty cheap it's not expensive and if that fixes it then happy days but um, yeah just a little update after I film, like I'm not just winging this, well, I sort of am winging it, most of it, but I am checking in with people who have a reasonable idea of what they're doing, and um, bouncing ideas off them, you know, every time I get stumped to try and figure stuff out, so, uh, yeah, thanks again. Trent, he has a channel, he just did the um, uh, Mount Morgan Hill Climb up north, uh, Gold Rush Hill Climb is the other name it's given, or I think that's the proper name. So, check out Trent on that. Uh, he's got the Sylvia S15 Silver, number 69. Um, if you look for, if you Google Trent Gold Ross Hill Climb, you'll, you'll find his videos. Uh, fast, very fast car and very good steerer. Uh, anyway, I'm going to um, go and find the number of the dude I got to flow clean and test my injectors last time and see if he's available.